Welcome back. In this short lesson I'm going to give you a very brief introduction into the Serpent input file. I want to give you just a basic idea of how the geometry is built up in the input file. The geometry of the system is basically composed of a number of so-called cells, which are uh, spatial regions bounded by different surfaces and filled with different materials. So let's start with the surfaces. Now in order to describe the geometry of a fuel assembly, we will primarily be using the cylinders and planes, number of them. So we need some way to identify different cylinders. So for this reason we will be assigning different numbers to different surfaces. So let's say that we have a cylinder like this. So this would be the radial cross-section of a cylinder. So we can assign some number to it. So for instance, number one. So this is the identification number of our cylinder. Now each surface in Serpent will divide the whole space into two parts. So there will be two spatial regions created using one surface and uh, in order to be able to identify what kind of region it is we will be assigning uh, signs to the spatial regions. So a cylinder with the identification number 1 will divide the space into two regions we can assign uh, the number plus one to one of the re regions and we can assign the number minus one to the other. So uh, the spatial region which is inside the cylinder is always assigned a negative number. So in this case the this spatial region inside is minus one it's assigned a number minus one and we will assign the name one to the spatial region outside of the cylinder so we don't typically write the plus sign to this name the same principle is applied to all surfaces which are closed like the cylinders spheres cubes and so on that the space which is inside the surface is assigned the same number as the surface but it has negative sign and the space outside of the surface is assigned the positive value of the number that denotes the surface. There are also surfaces which are not closed like planes so for instance we can have a plane x equals zero so again the whole space is divided into two parts uh, and we need to assign uh, a negative sign to one of these parts so by convention we uh, decide that the negative sign is assigned to that part of the space which faces the negative direction of the axis which is perpendicular to the plane so in this case this is the x axis and the positive direction is in this way so this part of the space is assigned a positive sign and this part negative so for instance if this plane had number 2 then the space was divided into two parts and the left part has number minus 2 right the positive part 2 is on the right hand side. Now once we have the surfaces defined in our input file we can use these spatial regions which are basically given by the surfaces we can use these spatial regions we can intersect them and by intersecting them we can create new cells 
with different shapes. So let me give you an example what I mean by this. For instance, I can create uh, two spheres. And this one I will assign a number one to it. And then we have another sphere. I can assign number two to it. So as for the spatial regions, the space inside the first sphere is region minus one. Outside of the first sphere we have region one. So that's everywhere outside, even here. As for the second sphere, the space inside is minus two. So that space even here and the space outside is 2. Now, by intersecting these regions, I can create new shapes and that we call cells. So, for instance, we can intersect the spatial region minus 1, which is the inside space of the sphere 1, and we can intersect this with the spatial region minus 2, which is here. So the intersection is this disk-like shape cell. And we are going to denote this intersection as minus 1, minus 2. So that is this intersection here. Now we can intersect more than two spatial regions. So let's say that we have a plane here, number three. So uh, let's say that the space below is minus three and the space above plus three. So if we wanted to create a cell with this shape, we intersect the spatial region minus 1 minus 2 with the spatial region 3. So we would write that as minus 1 minus 2 and 3. Let's take one more example. Let's take the fuel rod. So uh, we can uh, describe the geometry by cylinders. Uh, let's take one cylinder to create the fuel elements. So this would be the radial cross-section. And then there will be another cylinder needed to describe the cladding. So let's say that the surface number for the first cylinder is number 4 and the outer cylinder has number 5. So let's say we would like to create three cells to describe the geometry. One cell for uh, the fuel inside the fuel rod. So we could create uh, one cell that would have the spatial region minus four. Then we need one uh, cell to describe the cladding. So that is the space in between these two cylinders. So the intersection would be of the spatial region plus 4 and minus 5. Mm -hmm. So this is the intersection. And the space outside of the second cylinder is plus 5. So this would be space in which the coolant would flow. In a nuclear reactor there are hundreds of fuel assemblies and each assembly can have hundreds of fuel rods. So we can have many thousands of fuel rods in the reactor. It will be just for us impossible to describe every single uh, surface to describe the complete uh, geometry of the nuclear reactor. So we need some convenient way how we can uh, reuse the models that we create. For instance, we model the fuel rod and we want to copy this geometry to all the locations in the fuel assembly and then we want to copy a fuel assembly 
from one location to many other locations. Now you may have many different fuel types, for instance with different fuel enrichment, and we can also have different uh, fuel assembly types, and we need some way to identify the different assemblies or different rods. This identification is made by using the so-called universe numbers. So we assign a different universe number to a different uh, fuel rod type or to different fuel assembly type. Universes are something like layers in Photoshop. So in Photoshop we have layers in 2D. Uh, in uh, Serpent we have universes in 3D. So uh, universes they are kind of layers for 3D. We can make different operations with the universes. We can uh, translate them, we can rotate them, we can copy them to different locations in a lattice. And very importantly, you can fill a cell with a universe. So for instance, you create a universe like this. Let's say that we have two planes. So we have three cells and uh, Let's say that this upper plane is plane number one, then we have plane number two. So we have three spatial regions. One is one, the other one is minus one, two. And the last one is minus two. So we have three cells. And then we can uh, assign a universe number to the whole structure. So this would be for instance universe number one. So when we create all these cells we assign the same universe number to all of them so that it means that they belong to the same universe. And then we can create a cell. So for instance a, a sphere. So this can be surface number three and we fill it with universe number one. So universe number one will come here. So that means that the space inside of the sphere will contain the three layers which is created by the universe number one. The sphere, however, may be a part of another universe. So for instance, it can be universe number zero. So the space outside of the sphere may be assigned a new universe number zero, as well as the uh, sphere itself may be assigned a universe number zero as well. So it's just the universe number one, which was filled inside this sphere, but the sphere itself is assigned a universe number zero. Now, the rules say that only the universe which is marked as universe zero is actually visible in the simulation. Now, this doesn't mean that the other universes with the numbers which are different to the number zero are not present in any way in the final simulation. Like in this case you can see that although the cells are marked as universe number zero, actually universe number one is present here simply because the cell, the sphere, is filled with universe number one. And you know this could go on. We could have another universe, universe number two, uh, present in the universe number one. For instance, there could be some uh, cell inside universe number one, for instance here, that would be filled with universe number three, right? Although the sphere would be itself marked as the universe number one. Let me give you a brief overview of the general structure of the Serpent input file. 
basically each command is called a card in the terminology which has some historical reason the same terminology is used also for other codes like MCMP and each card starts with a keyword so the keyword may be for instance the term surf now this would mean that the card uh, describes a surface so after the keyword what follows is a series of parameters and these uh, are specific to the keyword so depending on what the keyword is there may be one or many of parameters that follow and they may follow on a number of lines so there are different keywords possible uh, the keyword surf denotes a surface definition but there are some other keywords like uh, the keyword cell which means that the card defines a cell so that is the intersection of volume regions so this way we create uh, different shapes then there is another card which has the keyword let which uh, means that the card defines a lattice so this could be a triangular or rectangular lattice depending on what kind of uh, geometry we are trying to model and there is special card pin for pin definitions and this basically simplifies the definition of uh, fuel rod geometry then there is another card with the keyword mat which means the card defines a material so it defines the composition of nuclides and the atomic concentration of different nuclides in the material and then there are other cards with the keyword set and these are uh, used for specifying of different optional parameters such as the in case of criticality calculations for instance we need to define the number of active and inactive cycles and the number of neutrons at each cycle so this is all done by the set cards i'm going to address these specific uh, cards in the following lessons so in this lesson i'm just giving you the general idea it's very useful to include some comments inside of your input file and in order to make sure that these comments don't interfere with the cards uh, we have to use special signs so everything what you write after the person signed or the hash sign is considered to be a user comment and it will be just ignored by serpent we have to use the default units when we for instance construct our surfaces or uh, when we describe the densities of materials we have to use the default units because you don't write the unit inside the input file so the unit for the distance is centimeter then uh, for volume we have uh, cubic centimeter very importantly the mass you have to write in uh, grams the mass density is in grams per cubic centimeter you have to choose whether you want to specify the mass density or the atomic density for uh, a material so if you choose the atomic density then the unit is 10 to the 24th per cubic centimeter if you want to specify the power for instance for the burn up simulations uh, you have to use the watt as the unit of the power and very importantly the burn up time has the unit of one day so this is when you specify the time steps in Monte Carlo burn up simulations you have to use the days as the unit so that is all for this lesson. Have a nice day.